Now, along with my father, Dave Marcus is probably one of the other most influential people in my upbringing in the outdoors. Now, I got a chance to sit down with Dave and talk about his career in NASCAR and how his Wisconsin roots shaped his love and passion for the outdoors. Well, originally from Wausau, Wisconsin, which is about, I guess, 50 miles here south of Rib Lake. My father, yes, was a big fisherman. My grandpa took my brother and I fishing all the time. So, uh, you know, we, we come from a fishing family, a hunting family. Um, actually, up in this part of the country, uh, your father and I, we raced stock cars together, uh, Marlon Walbeck. And uh, I came up here and deer hunted a lot with your dad, and we did a lot of fishing also. You were probably just as influential in my upbringing, and in fact, people ask me a lot of times about how I got involved fishing and hunting and so on. Well, well I had two mentors, my dad and Dave Marcus, and, <laughs> and whether it be uh, fishing on the Willow Floats or hunting up a Triple I or whatever, uh, that was instrumental in my upbringing. What What are some of your memories when you'd come back at, you know, your time off on the Winston Cup circuit, you'd come back in the fall and, and do a little hunting. What do you remember about those times? Well, you know, I, I used to hunt a lot with your father, and of course, we both enjoyed deer hunting and uh, he had some guys that helped sponsor his race car down from Wisconsin Dells and they come up here hunting so we had a pretty good group of guys and a bunch of guys that loved to hunt loved to go out in the evening have a couple beers eat a big steak that's you know northern Wisconsin style get some fresh fish and just cook them up and, and we just always had a good time. We enjoyed life and, and tried to make the most of it. And it was a lot of fun no doubt it, about it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> early days uh, growing up in Wassa, uh, how did you get involved in into the auto racing end of the business? Well my father had a garage and a wrecking yard so I was around automobiles a lot we also were on a farm but you know my love was kind of always around cars and stuff I like to work with metal and fabricate and weld and stuff like that and being he had that wrecking yard uh, when he or my mother would go away for a weekend my brother and I we'd go hot water some of them cars and get them running and tear around in the fields and things like that. And we got in plenty of trouble with those cars, not on the highway, but around the farm and stuff like that. But uh, it just got my, me interested in, in automobiles. And um, they opened up a racetrack that had been closed for many, many years in Rib Mountain, Wisconsin, right by Wassa. They had a little ad in a newspaper that they were gonna have a meeting about opening the racetrack up. And I attended that meeting at that meeting that night, they had made arrangements to lease that racetrack from a gentleman by the name of Otto Holtz. And uh, it was called State Park Speedway in Rib Mountain. And if you joined the club that night, uh, one of the benefits would be you got to choose a number that you would like to run. So I, at that time, chose number two, in which I ran for my entire career here in Wisconsin. And, and that's how my career started, and um, I was pretty successful here. And, you know, I thought I'd done about as good as I was ever going to do here, and I wanted to do the racing sport for a living. So I looked at USAC, and I looked at the Indy cars, and I, I was really stock car oriented. So I chose NASCAR because of the season. I mean, they start in February, and they go all the way into November. So if you're going to race stock cars for a living, NASCAR is where you need to go do it. So I decided that, hey, I would try it. I just, I loaded up my car and hit it down south, and I mean, I, I didn't have no idea what I was getting into. I didn't know what it took to do it. I didn't know how much money it took to do it. A friend of mine, Larry Weirs from Weirs Chevrolet Sales in Bangor, Wisconsin, he helped me, helped sponsor me, and later after that, it was Milt Lunder from Lunder Construction Company in Black River Falls, Wisconsin, and that's what got me started in NASCAR, and, 35 years later, I retired from NASCAR. What was it like when you first got down there with the help of some of these individuals from Wisconsin? What were some of the things that went through your mind? Well, I, mean, I, I didn't realize that what it took to make pit stops and all that stuff, because running these short tracks in Wisconsin, you know, 50 laps, 25 laps, none of that was necessary. So I found out right away I had to have a crew of people and things to come and help on the weekends to change tires to put in gas. But a lot of the littler guys and stuff, we all helped each other. Everybody was very friendly. Richard Petty uh, come over right away and welcomed me to NASCAR and looked my car over and Bobby Allison, David Pearson, a bunch of those guys. And uh, I felt very welcome and, and everybody was willing to help me. Dick Trickle and I have talked about it many times and uh, 
I think Dick said one day, I think we actually raced in the best era. You know, when the rules were a little more relaxed, we could do a lot of more things. You could be innovative on the race car, um, come up with ideas. You know, everybody would eventually catch on to what you were trying to do or whatever. But sometimes you get an advantage for a race or two. And uh, today, you know, it's just so ironclad. The rules and everything is equal. I think it takes something away from the sport. Now I remember uh, as a child when I'd come down and, and come down with my dad and spend some time with you in North Carolina. One of the things I remember is uh, your relationship with Richard Childress. And, I mean, you and Richard are very good friends. Well, Richard and I were good friends, and of course, uh, uh, Neil Bonnet used to do a lot of testing for Dale when Dale drove for Richard. And then when uh, we lost Neil in that accident that he had at Daytona, I started doing a lot of testing for Richard, which actually was for Dale. And uh, we were just good friends, and, and like I said, we helped each other, and Richard done work on my race cars sometimes, his guys in his shop. And uh, my driving style or something just seemed to suit Dale's driving style, so when I would help him set the car up and things like that and test for him, he hated to test. Um, he, he, he liked what we came up with and what we done to the race car. And uh, I actually set the chassis up on the car that Dale won the Daytona 500 with. And uh, you know that was quite an accomplishment and I'm pretty proud of that. And Dale thanked me for that after the race in Victory Circle. So uh, that was quite an honor. But, but Richard Childress, uh, he helped me a lot. Uh, they always tried to pay me for the work and things I'd done for him. And like I told Richard, I said, you know, even if you give me two thousand dollars to, to test for twenty five hundred, you can't buy a lot of good racing parts with that much money. So I said, why don't you guys give me some of your good used parts? Because they keep upgrading and upgrading all the time, and they test stuff. I said I can make a living if I got good parts. So give me some of those, because you guys they set them on the shelf. That's right. And uh, so they start doing that, and they actually never really gave me any money for testing; just gave me used parts. That enabled me to be more competitive and win more money, and that was a big, big help for me. One of the things that most people will say is it doesn't matter where Dave Marcus goes, there's usually a good time. Well, I, I get along with everybody, and I enjoy having a good time. <laughs> I work hard and I play hard. You definitely work hard, <laughs> that's for sure. In fact, uh, we were kind of commenting yesterday that uh, we're going to try to catch up with you with your, at your farm in Triple I. But as soon as you said you were going to be planting corn, I knew that if we showed up there, we'd be picking rock or something. Yeah. <laughs> Dave is probably one of the hardest working people I've ever met. He's independent and he's the, if you need something, if he can help you, he's the first one in line to do it. First trip. I had to load firewood through a little basement window into his basement and I'm telling you it took a whole afternoon to do it. And that happened and then after you get done with that you get to put on all his storm windows. Dave and I spent uh, probably two, two days doing handyman repairs in the, in the camp there and yesterday I went out to his farm and helped him plant and he was plowing and we were planting corn out mowing grass. and. And you name it, it was, uh, it was, a, it was an all-day job. We used to fish the Upper Peninsula, and every now and then I'd fall asleep in the boat. He'd take a picture of me and he'd show it around town how high Cletus can't fish sleeping. Well, one day he fell asleep in the boat, and I took a picture. I took it home and I blew it up, great big huge picture, put it on my wall. He came over to my house for a uh, fish fry picnic type thing. We got him into the front door started the conversation about falling asleep in the boat and he started just picking on me racing the helmet. Right behind him on the wall was this picture of him sleeping in the boat. Had no clue it was there. So finally, <laughs> finally after we cornered him, got him going, he, we got him to turn on. He looked at that picture, he turned ten shades of green, walked in the kitchen, opened a beer and stood there and didn't speak to a soul for ten minutes. <laughs> Now, when you were involved on the on the Cup circuit, you always had a habit of bringing some pretty interesting characters back here to Wisconsin, whether it be hunting or fishing and so on. Uh, maybe talk about some of the guys that you bring back here with you. Well, I, I've had a lot of them up here with me. And of course, my closest friend, Dale Earnhardt, Dale never actually made it up here with me. Bobby Allison, Donnie Allison spent some time up here with me. They've been up here in Rib Lake, their wives. We've gone fishing, we've gone salmon fishing over in Lake Michigan. Um, and, and everybody I did bring up here, a lot of guys that worked for me, mechanics and stuff like that, always had a good time up here. 
with the hunting and the fishing and going out. You know, Wisconsin, uh, especially northern Wisconsin, is a place where people seem to congregate in the bars and they talk fishing and hunting and the whole families come, you know, it ain't just the guys. And it's just the way of life here in northern Wisconsin. One of the comments that a lot of people uh, I remember that would, would come along with you here made is that they always felt right at home right here in Rib Lake. You mentioned that, but you'd be quite surprised. A lot, a lot of people that I brought up here with me, when we would go back, they would say, you know, they talk about Southern hospitality where we're at, they really should come up here. Well, having been uh, friends with Dave Marcus, he's been a friend of the families for uh, Shoot as long as I can remember. And uh, uh, Dave was uh, got involved with this tournament and I've been coming up here and this is my fourth tournament with him and it's, uh, it's a great time. All the lakes and all the north woods is fantastic. It's just, it's a unique part of the world. I just love it up here, uh, but primarily the people. I mean, they're just fantastic people. You can't, I can't say enough about them. I've got to know a lot of the local business owners and they've been just more than hospitable and just gracious hosts and I've uh, just really enjoyed coming here. You always feel welcome. You always, I've always felt like I was just part of the town when I got here. So it's just been a, uh, I mean, it, I always look forward to this. This is, this is the highlight of my year, being able to come up here and, and spend some time in Rib Lake, Wisconsin. Everyone that I've ever brought up here has said they felt very, very welcome. I know you and Dale Earnhardt were very good friends and you were very close. Maybe talk a little bit about your relationship with Dale. Well, Dale was quite a character uh, and, and a better friend you could never find. And uh, uh, the way we actually became real close friends is he actually started driving for Rod Osterlin, which a team I had driven for the previous year and quit. And we were racing at Martinsville, Virginia. And we were running a quite a bit of the race together and side by side, and Dale just kept leaning on me and kept leaning on me. I got mad and spun him up. And he didn't talk to me after that, probably for two months. And then one day he walked up to me, I think we were at Rockingham, and he grabbed you around the neck and jerked you over there with that big grin, you know. And he said, you know that deal at Martinsville? He said, I had that coming. And he said, my daddy always taught me if you had a problem with anyone, settle it today or right now, get it over with, don't carry it down the road. And he said, I had that coming and we just became the very best of friends after that. I know you got a chance to spend some time with him in the outdoors and do some hunting and fishing. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, we did a quite a bit of deer hunting and stuff and, and of course uh, Bill Jordan from Real Tree, Bill would come with us and uh, one day Dale called Helen up. I believe it was on a Wednesday afternoon and says to Helen, you tell Dave to be at the airport in Asheville tomorrow, we're going hunting. And you know, I'm going to pick him up at six o'clock, tell him to don't be late. So I mean, like, I'm all excited. Did he say where we're going or what we hunt? No, he just said, all you need to do is just be there. Everything else was handled. So I'm at that airport the next morning, you know, 5.30. I wait and I wait and I wait and they don't show up. He finally gets there about 7 or 7.15. He walks in grinning from ear to ear. He says, I'll bet you've been here since six o'clock, ain't you? <laughs> and he just liked doing pranks like that. But anyhow, we got on the airplane and we went to Texas. And we went hunting. I think he and Bill each had a trophy hunt. And um, uh, along with that comes what they call management deer. And I, Dale said, you can shoot my management deer and Bill's, and they were hunting trophies. So for me, that was a big deal, because I couldn't afford to go on a hunt like that. But, uh, and we done some of that kind of stuff. But, but then the, the animals that I have mounted down here in the bar, but the moose and the caribou, is a hunt that Richard Childress gave to me when I retired in British Columbia at Miles Bradford. And uh, uh, Richard came along on that hunt also. So, uh, and we had a great time that, that time too. After you retired from the Winston Cup Series, uh, you kind of split time between here in Wisconsin uh, and in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, and you had something going on here in Wisconsin. Tell us a little bit about what was going on here at Camp 28. Well, I bought Camp 28 here in Rib Lake, Wisconsin. A lot of people get a misconception when they hear Camp 28, they think I have a hunting camp or a fishing camp. It is a bar, a motel, and a restaurant called Camp 28 because of a logging camp that was here in Rib Lake, Wisconsin from 1881 to 1948. 
what well, one of the biggest logging camps in the state of Wisconsin and one of the longest running camps. There was also there were two mills actually here in Rib Lake. Mm -hmm. But that is why Camp 28 is called Camp 28. It's not a it's not specifically a hunting camp or a fishing camp. We do have a lot of fishermen stay here and a lot of hunters, but it's actually a northern Wisconsin bar, motel, and restaurant. Now you co-sponsor the Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament with the Rib Lake Area Fish and Game Association. Maybe tell us a little bit about how this annual event came about. A guy that I had run in the place suggested, why don't we have a Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament in the spring? Help the guys out with the fish and game. So I said, well, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. So what we do is we, we hold it here in this facility on Rib Lake right in front of the place. And they pay back 80% of the prize money to all the contestants. The rest of the money and the raffles and the things like that that they have is all used to, to put minnows and get uh, rearing stock walleyes. They have two rearing ponds. And they use those walleyes, are those rearing ponds, to stock a lot of the lakes here in the Rib Lake area. In fact, I think they stock like five different lakes every year with the walleyes that they raise in those ponds. I think the DNR furnishes those walleyes. But they buy a lot of minnows and things like that to put in those ponds uh, for those little walleyes to eat. So this is what it ended up to be. This year is the 11th annual Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament and everyone's been a great success. The one we had today, uh, uh, I think there were like 36 walleyes caught and I think the winning boat actually was my cousin, Sherman Marcus, and his partner. And um, I believe that they had their limits, which was five walleyes each person. I think their catch totaled like 178 inches. That's right, they had a very good catch. Which today. is an excellent catch. Now, how did you fare on? I, I got a chance to, to see you out on the water with Gino, a good friend of yours from Wausau, Wisconsin. And I know you two were paired up together. How did you guys fare on the water? Today? Well, that's probably not worth talking about. <laughs> Gino caught one walleye. I caught a lot of bullheads. I uh, caught a bunch of tree branches. I know you guys got that on film, so I might as well admit it. But uh, Gino had a walleye on, and I netted it, and I had a rappella laying on top of the night crawler box. I tripped on something in the boat and got down on top of that night crawler box and got a rappel of bait stuck in the seat of my pants. And thankfully, you guys weren't there to film that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry we missed that. <laughs> What's next for Dave Marcus? I know you've been working hard at the farm getting all your food plots in and getting ready for the deer hunting season coming up. I know you just finished up with a turkey hunt. What's next or what's on tap for the summer here for you? Well, I mean, we'll be going back to North Carolina in a couple weeks, and, and I got projects going down there, but here in Wisconsin, um, I'll be back in probably the latter part of June. I'm going to plant some more food plots for the deer, which I do every year. I deer hunt here in Wisconsin every fall, um, and I'm going to, of course, do some fishing. Um, I burn a lot of firewood, so I cut firewood. Um, I just stay busy all the time. I, I still have my shop in uh, North Carolina. Uh, the race car that I actually retired was from NASCAR. And uh, we just went to Wilmington, Ohio the end of April and set three new land speed records with that 2002 Chevrolet Monte Carlo that I drove when I retired with that engine in that Dewey's car. <laughs> well, I guess it would be an understatement to say then you're definitely staying busy in retirement. I definitely am. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot, Dave, for taking time with us. Folks, join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around Wisconsin, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV.